let's take a look at gases, ideal gases, and the kinetic theory of ideal gases. So remember back to when we looked at the gas phase. The molecules, on average, have higher kinetic energies, and they have high potential energies. So in other words, they're moving around very fast, and they have almost no interactions, almost no intermolecular bonds between them. And from a macroscopic point of view, a gas will fill the volume of whatever container it is inside. All right, so that's what we've seen so far. Now, to go any further with analyzing a gas, we have to talk about pressure. Pressure is defined as the force per area, and we can make a nice equation out of that. P, pressure, is equal to F, force, divided by A, area. And you can get the units from this equation. The units of pressure are the newton per square meter, and that newton per square meter is defined as a pascal, PA. Now, pressure is a pretty big uh, concept. We're going to specifically talk about gas pressure. And in gas pressure, the force is the force that's exerted by the gas molecules when they collide with the side of a container. And the area that we're talking about is the area of that side of the container. And there are many ways to think about this, but one of the factors that will affect pressure is the number of molecules that are hitting the side of the container. So for example, if you had more molecules that are hitting the side of the container, that means there's more force being applied, and then the pressure would be greater. Another thing that could affect the pressure is the speed of the molecules. So if the molecules are moving faster, then that means that when they collide with the side of the container, they're going to exert a greater force. And if they exert a greater force, then you're going to have a greater pressure. And yet another way to think about it is that if you had the same number of molecules moving at the same velocities, the same kinetic energies, but they're spread out over a larger area, then you would have a smaller pressure. Okay, now let's think about what are called the gas laws. And we'll look at four of them. Charles' law, Boyle's law, the third law, and Avogadro's law. And they are referred to as laws because we observe gases following these relationships. Now it turns out that they don't always follow these relationships perfectly, but let's worry about that later. So Charles' law. Charles' law states that for a fixed mass of gas kept at a constant pressure, the volume of the gas is proportional to the temperature of the gas. And let's see if we can make sense of that from a molecular perspective. So let's say we increase the temperature of a gas. If you increase the temperature of the gas, then that means that on average the gas molecules have more kinetic energy. They're moving faster. So every collision that a gas molecule has with the side is going to apply more force to the side. Okay. More force means that the pressure should increase. However, in Charles' law, we're saying we're keeping the pressure constant. So if the amount of force being applied by the molecules is increasing, but the pressure stays the same, that means that the area that the force is applied over has to also increase. And the way to increase the area over which the forces are applied is to make your container bigger. In other words, make the volume bigger. So then it makes sense. If you increase the temperature, you have to have a greater volume. The volume is proportional to the temperature, as long as you have a fixed mass at constant pressure. All right, let's look at Boyle's law. Boyle's law states that for a fixed mass of gas kept at constant temperature, the pressure is inversely proportional to the volume. Okay. Let's see if we can make sense of that from a molecular perspective. So let's say we increase the volume that the gas is in. If we increase the volume, but we keep the temperature the same, then that means we have a greater area. We have a greater area over which those uh, molecules are having an impact. And every collision is still uh, applying roughly the same amount of force because we haven't changed the temperature. The molecules aren't any faster or slower than they were before. But the force of the impacts is spread over a larger area. And so if we increase the volume, we're also increasing the area over which we're applying the forces, which means that the pressure decreases. So the pressure is inversely proportional to the volume, as long as you have a fixed mass of gas at constant temperature. Now the third law, which is also called the Gay-Lussac law, 
states that for a fixed mass of gas at constant volume, the pressure is proportional to the temperature. So in this situation, the volume of the gas is not changing. If we increase the temperature, then that means we're increasing the average kinetic energy per molecule. And if we're increasing the average kinetic energy per molecule, that means the molecules on average are going to be moving faster. And so every collision that a molecule has with the side is going to apply more force. So the area of the sides of the container is staying the same. We're just increasing the amount of force of every collision on average. And so if we increase the force, keep the volume the same, the pressure increases. So increase the temperature, increase the pressure. Pressure is proportional to temperature. The last of the gas laws is called Avogadro's law. And Avogadro's law states that at constant temperature and constant pressure, the number of molecules is proportional to the volume. So one way to think about this is, well, if we're keeping the average kinetic energy of the molecules the same, in other words, the temperature is constant, and the pressure has to stay the same, then that means if we increase the number of molecules, then we also have to increase the amount of space that the molecules have to move around in. So more gas molecules need more space if we must keep the same temperature and pressure. So let's take all of these gas laws together and see if we can create one synthesized equation. Well, we can. The way to do that is PV over NT has to equal a constant. And let's call the constant capital R. So P is for pressure, V is for volume, T is for temperature. N in this equation is going to represent the number of moles of gas. And you might remember what a mole is from chemistry. We'll talk about it a little bit later. And that has to equal this capital R, a constant. And that R is called the ideal gas constant. And the reason it's called the ideal gas constant is because if we rearrange this equation a little bit, we can get PV is equal to nRT. That is called the equation of state of an ideal gas. That equation right there applies to what is called an ideal gas. In fact, an ideal gas is defined as a gas which obeys this law. All right. So R, that's called the ideal gas constant. And for every ideal gas, R is equal to 8.31 joules per Kelvin per mole. Okay. And I mentioned before that N is equal to the number of moles. Well, let's think about a mole. A mole is defined as the amount of substance containing the same number of particles as there are neutral atoms in 12 grams of carbon-12. So that's a pretty long definition, but that is the official definition of a mole. And if you remember back to when we talked about units, the mole is one of the SI base units. In other words, it's one of the fundamental units of SI. Now let's also define Avogadro's number. Avogadro's number, written as n with a little a next to it, is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23. A lot of times people think that that is a mole. That is not a mole. A mole is the amount of substance containing the same number of particles as there are neutral atoms and 12 grams of carbon-12. I realize that's a lot of words, but that's the definition of a mole. 6.02 times 10 to the 23, that is Avogadro's number. So if I ever ask you for the definition of mole, don't give me 6.02 times 10 to the 23. That's not a mole. That's Avogadro's number. Okay, so now that I've clarified that, let's write down a simple equation to take you from the number of molecules to the number of moles. N is equal to N over N. Okay, if you say that out loud, that doesn't make a lot of sense. But N over here on the left is the number of moles. The N on top over here, that's the number of molecules. And the N down there on the bottom is Avogadro's number. So that's the way to convert between the number of molecules and the number of moles. Another concept is the molar mass. The molar mass is the mass of one mole of a substance. That's all it is. It tells you the mass of one mole of a substance. So for instance, uh, diatomic nitrogen, N2, has a molar mass of 28 grams per mole. That's how much mass there is per mole of N2. So if you had two moles of N2, you would have 56 grams of N2. 
That's the mass of it. Uh, and if you had 9.5 moles of N2, well, let's see, that would be 28 grams per mole, the molar mass, times the number of moles, 9.5 moles. And so 9.5 moles of N2 has a mass of 266 grams. And usually we want to convert that to kilograms, so let's take the extra step. That's 0.266 kilograms. Let's finish up with the kinetic model of an ideal gas. So this is a very important model in the history of physics. Uh, what it does is it takes the idea of microscopic molecules and how they behave, and it uses it to predict the macroscopic behavior of gases. And technically it only applies to ideal gases. However, Many real gases, especially real gases that we interact with in a normal situation, those real gases often behave very similar to an ideal gas. All right. So the model of an ideal gas makes a couple assumptions. One of the assumptions is we say that the gas consists of many, many, many molecules that are all identical and have negligible size. So we have to have many molecules. This model will not apply to a gas that's only containing, say, three molecules. And also we're assuming that the gas molecules are very, very small and are all identical. We also assume that there are no intermolecular forces in an ideal gas. The molecules move around randomly and they do not interact with each other. So if we were to look at any single gas molecule, it would be impossible to predict without knowing what every other gas molecule is doing. Um, this kind of motion is called Brownian motion. You may hear that phrase. Brownian motion refers to the random motion of gas molecules in this case, where it is unpredictable from moment to moment, unless you know what every other gas molecule is also doing. All right. We also assume in an ideal gas that any collisions between molecules or between molecules in the sides of the container is completely elastic. So if you remember back to when we talked about collisions, an elastic collision is one in which no energy is lost. And what that means for an ideal gas is that an ideal gas has no way to lose energy to the sides of the container. Now one of the powerful things about this kinetic model of an ideal gas is that if you make these assumptions and then you use the basic laws of physics that apply to everything, and you apply that to these tiny little gas molecules in an ideal gas, you get some surprising results. One of the results is that you can show that for an ideal gas that follows these rules, PV equals NRT. Now we're not going to show that proof, but PV equals NRT, that came from the gas laws, which are just observed, right? They're macroscopic observations of pressure and volume and temperature. But using the kinetic model of an ideal gas, we can show that the microscopic motion also results in PV equals NRT. So we get the same result, same observable result, from both the macroscopic view and the microscopic view. Another result coming from the kinetic model of an ideal gas is that we can have an equation for the average random molecular kinetic energy of every gas molecule. In an ideal gas, the average random kinetic energy of a molecule in an ideal gas is equal to 3 halves kT. That k, or kb, is known as Boltzmann's constant, and it's equal to 1.38 times 10 to the minus 23 joules per Kelvin. That's a pretty important constant in physics, and we'll see it every once in a while. It pops up in strange places. But we can get an equation for the average kinetic energy of a molecule in an ideal gas. Uh, now, one other thing about Boltzmann's constant. So Boltzmann's constant comes from this microscopic view. And if you remember back to when we saw the equation of state for an ideal gas from a macroscopic point of view, it has R in it, the gas constant. So Kb and R are actually related. They're very closely related. They're related by a constant. And in fact, the constant that they're related by is a number which links microscopic to macroscopic, Avogadro's number. It turns out that the gas constant, the ideal gas constant R, is equal to Boltzmann's constant times Avogadro's number. 
Now, a couple other things to notice about the kinetic theory of an ideal gas. One, for an ideal gas, there's no bonds between the molecules. So in other words, there's no potential energy in an ideal gas. There is only kinetic energy in an ideal gas. Okay. Um, also, we assume elastic collisions. So as I said before, there's no loss of energy for an ideal gas. Ideal gas cannot lose energy through a container or through collisions. Also, ideal gases cannot become liquids. We are assuming that there are no intermolecular forces. If there's no intermolecular forces, it cannot become a liquid. Okay. Um, there are a couple differences also between ideal gases and real gases. A real gas, well, real gases do have some intermolecular forces, um, but they behave very similar to ideal gases in most situations. They don't, that assumption breaks down when we go to very, very uh, high or low temperatures, when we go to high pressures, very high densities. So that's when the assumptions that we are making about an ideal gas start to break down. Also, one other difference with real gases is real gases have what's called rotational kinetic energy, as well as side-to-side -side or translational kinetic energy, which we have ignored. But still, very often, real gases do behave very similar to ideal gases.